we're here at the Baptist Hour, 2020 Baptist Hour, and I'm uh, going to be uh, preaching tonight about faith, having total faith in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you for your grace and love. We pray, dear God, that your word will go out and many people receive it. We pray for the revival and people turn to thee and others will trust you as their personal Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and sing our uh, verse here. We're going to sing a song, Wonderful Words of Life. And we'll sing all three verses of Wonderful Words of Life. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. And on the second verse. Christ the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinnerless to his loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Amen. And that is very true. The words of life come from the Bible. God is a God of life, not of death. Death came from sin. It's a penalty of sin. That's why we see death around us. And it started in the Garden of Eden, Eden when Adam and Eve were deceived by the devil. That's where it began. But Jesus came and died on the cross for us so that we can have everlasting life. That's why God sent his only son to die on the cross. And he rose again from the dead to give us victory over sin, death, and hell. Now Hebrews chapter 11. Turn your Bibles, please, to Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, we're going we're gonna to read... Um, um, uh, most of the uh, chapter here, and that is the uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a great report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet appeaseth. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. And that's the Lord. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, preparing an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles of Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he, looking for a city which hath foundations, 
whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even one in him as good as dead, as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And so that's how we are to live, just like these people live. They all live by faith, in God. They had their faith in God. How, how do we know who God is? By reading the Bible. And you can test whether teaching or preaching or anything that you hear or see is of God by reading what the Bible says and comparing it to it. Knowing the Bible well is the best way to know uh, a counterfeit or something that's not really from the Lord. Just like a banker studies real money to tell the difference between fake money and real money. He doesn't study fake money, he studies real money so that they can know, and that's how they're trained to know the difference between counterfeit cash and real cash when they work at a bank. Same thing here. There's only one God, and there's only one mediator, mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And by faith, we can know the Lord as our Savior. Now all these people, the thing they had in was faith. They had faith in God. And they knew God. They had complete faith in Him, and they had complete knowledge of Him. A lot of things they didn't understand about what God wanted them to do, but they had faith in Him, and they knew Him. Now, by faith, we can know who Jesus is by trusting Him. And we must believe in Him in order to be saved. Jesus said, He that will come to me and know why is cast out. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's how we are to be saved. And that's how we are to live for the Lord, is by faith. Faith in him. Not in ourselves. Not in, not in the world or someone else in the world. In order to have life everlasting, we must believe in God. We must believe in the Lord, Jesus Christ. Who is God manifest in the flesh? That's who Emmanuel is. Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. And he invites us to trust him. I trusted him as my Savior when I was 17. And my wife, when she was five, and our children, when they're about five or six each, <clears throat> they trusted Christ as Savior. And they know they're going to heaven. No doubts, no problems with that at all. Complete faith in him, because he gives us that faith and that knowledge. So I invite you to turn to the Lord and trust him as your personal Savior. Ask him to be your Savior. And you can have faith like these people have had, like others have, and others have today. You don't have to try to be good or join a, join a club or a church, although it's important to go to a church, but to be saved is by faith in him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. We thank you so much for your, for your love and grace. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Okay, it's um...